Okay, so as I introduce myself, uh, as I introduce myself, my name is Shad Khan, and I'm the experienced Agada citizen, and her name is Sara Yusuf. So let's start. So the first question is, uh, like, what are the main, like, what are the sufferings you have in Palestine? Like, um, yeah. So um, first of all, I'm uh, an 18 Palestinian girl. I live in Rafah in Gaza Strip. Um, so the struggles, you know, uh, we have been struggling even before 1948 as Palestinians. And um, it started with expelling the Palestinians from their homeland and forcing them to leave it. And then denying that they're country has ever existed and um, there are some Israeli people who are um, raising awareness about the apartheid and they're against what their governments do and I don't have a problem with those people I have the, a problem with the like the people who kill Palestinians who are doing injustice against us and, and a lot of people get like confused between Judaism or Zionism. We are only against Zionism. The Zionists who came as gangs to kick Palestinians out of their homeland, but we're not against Jewish people. Jewish people are like a lot of them are supporting Palestine and are against what the Israeli government is based upon, the upper thigh, the killing, the oppression, the humiliation, the segregation. They're against all of this injustice. So we are only against Zionism and just, yeah. Even though Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine and it's away for me, maybe less than two hours, but I only visited it once when I was in eighth grade. I felt a mixture of happiness, peace and anger, disappointment. I was really mad at the occupation and the borders. They, and I saw what it was unfair because this holy place, this religious, peaceful, beautiful place is in my country and I cannot even visit. I cannot enjoy it. It was for a short period and, and I was really mad. And I hope one day uh, Palestine is free and we all can go and, and pray there together. So it's hard. <laughs> Even though Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine and it's a way for me, maybe the war ended, I thought, or I felt like the, the hashtags or the posts we're not going as viral or like people stop talking about it. But yeah. yeah, and I hope that we just keep raising awareness, keep posting about it and keep telling people because um, even if there is no war, the apartheid is still going on and the building of the settlements, the oppression and the torturing, the sieging is still going on. The struggle is continuing. So yeah. Yeah. Very important point. It says, you know, that there is a war and people are dying. And then everybody is talking about Palestine and everybody cares about Palestine and it's back in our attention. But as soon as the war, you know, there's a ceasefire, as Sister Sarah was saying, the hashtags and everything stops dying. We move on with our lives. And, you know, part of it, of course, it's natural, uh, but and uh, obviously you can't be involved with the same intensity uh, but, you know, we, we should not forget about them, maybe make it a practice at least once a month or um, I'll share something about or once a week, I'll share something about what's happening there or do something about it, become a part of a local Palestinian uh, rights organization to, you know, be more regular in it. Israel is counting on this, that they will, you know, 
uh, go and beat Gaza up whenever they want. And then they know after a little while, you will forget about it. So then they can go back in a little while again. But if we are constantly, um, you know, raising our voices about it, they're not going to be able to do what they do every few years. And as Sister Sarah is saying, if the war is finished, doesn't mean the apartheid is finished. They're still under a blockade. They still can't get out. They're still taking their land is still being stolen from them every day. Uh, they're like so connected to Allah. Uh, how? How do you not lose hope and stay hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that your question? Yes. Yeah. Good question. Great question. So Sister Sarah, how do you how do you stay hopeful in Allah? Like, you know, uh, uh, so so many of us, it seems situation seems like completely hopeless. Like, how do you stay faithful and have iman and not um, begin questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like that, but have hope in him still after so many years? And you know, um, every day we wake up and say that it will never get worse than it is, but it always does. But I don't like, I don't know what is the secret, but I feel like God has chosen us to fight this fight. Like he, I think every time um, he gives us the, the patience, the perseverance to fight, to mm -hmm. fight for our rights, for our existence, for just to defend our homeland, and um, for the religious status and the, that it has. And, and, and yeah, like since the 1948, the Israeli Gans have been saying that elder people will die and younger people will forget. But here we are, 70 yeah. years, like more than 70 years, and we are still fighting. And um, I feel like, yeah, I think God has chosen us for this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And they are wrong about it, right? That younger people will forget. It's actually pretty scary. So um, the next question, are there enough universities and colleges to ensure the education? Like your English is so good. We found so many other Palestinians, but they all know Arabic. So how do you know such well English? Um, so for my English, we have, uh, I was enrolled in a uh, scholarship called Access, and it's like a program for teaching American English. And then I was an exchange student uh, two years ago in the United States. I lived with an American family that supports Palestine for a year with the YES scholarship. I don't know if you hear it, but it's funded by the American government. So I was an exchange student in the United States to help tell people about our issue and tell them more about Palestine and just inform them. Yeah. She's actually really surprising. I was confused. Like she knows such very English and this uh, education problem. So the last question. So. The last question. Tell us about the COVID situation. Like, is there health care about for Corona vaccination? Um, so yeah, so um we they recently provided us with the vaccines uh through the Palestinian Authority, and they are encouraging people to take the vaccine, and I'm planning uh to take it soon. And yeah, but unfortunately, it's just spreading so fast. Yesterday, we had 1,000 new cases in Gaza and um, five deaths, sadly. And because people are just not taking as much precautions as they did at the beginning of the pandemic. And because Gaza is just blocked and sieged in like in one small place with a lot of people and it's so dense. So it's just spreading so fast um, among people. 
I do not know what is that, when is that going to end, but I know that we will not give up. I mean, for us, it's not going to end until we set the whole of Palestine free. I think that's the ending point for us. That's the finishing line. Before that, I don't think we're going to like give up or um, stop resisting. Absolutely. Okay. And it is so I see a question that says what um, there are some Israeli people who are um, raising awareness about the apartheid and they're against what their governments do. And I don't have a problem with those people. I have the, a problem with the, like the people who kill Palestinians who are doing injustice against us. And, and a lot of people get like confused between Judaism or Zionism. We are only against Zionism. The Zionists who came as gangs to kick Palestinians out of their homeland. But we're not against Jewish people. Jewish people are like a lot of them are supporting Palestine and are against what the Israeli government is based upon the upper thigh, the killing, the oppression, the humiliation, the segregation. They're against all of this injustice. So we are only against 